Good morning. The government has unveiled an ambitious investment in the job market, raising its budget by 7.6% next year, the largest ever with a goal to attain 70% employment. With the athletes looking to shine at the Incheon Asian Games, Korean companies are looking to strut their latest at the Games. The idea that sparkling water is better for your body than regular water, is this true? We'll get a look at the ice cold facts. Continuing from last week, we'll get back to Jeonju and see what our Fab Four had a chance to experience on Korea Today, Tuesday, September 30th, 2014. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. Hello and welcome to this Tuesday edition of Korea Today. I'm Odin Joo alongside Kim Young and Kim Min Chao. Good morning, everyone. So we've been talking a lot about sports at the Asian Games that are well known to people around the world. Well, today we're going to talk about a sport that not a lot of people know about. It's called kabaddi. It's a contact sport that involves uh, holding hands mm -hmm. and holding your breath also. <laughs> right. Interesting. Right. Uh, and Young Kim will now. enlighten us now with this sport. <laughs> I'll try. Now, kabaddi is a team game. There's two teams of seven in a course with so seven on seven. They have one raider that goes into the other court for a period of time. This is the catch though. Stamina and lung power is very necessary because you need to hold your breath on each raid. So the point is try to tag the other opponents on their court and uh, holding your breath at the same time. So it's like tag. One tag equals one point for your team. Aww. So whoever gets the most points wins. Right. And how do you know you're holding your breath? Kabadi, kabadi, kabadi. Really? Kabadi, kabadi, kabadi. <laughs> Interesting. Huh? All right, although it's an unfamiliar sport for many here in Korea and probably many poor, uh, people around the world, there are heightened expectations about uh, the South Korean team securing a medal in this year's Asian Games because of their hard work and determination. And today at 2 p.m. Korea time, the men's team will be facing off Iran in the Kabaddi event. Mm -hmm. Hold your breath right there. <laughs> <laughs> it will be an exciting one. We'll be cheering for the Korea team as well as all the teams that are participating in the Asian Games. But for now, we'll jump to our top headline for this morning. Now, in an aggressive push to bolster employment in Korea, the government has allocated the largest ever budget to expand the job market next year. The Ministry of Employment and Labor raised next year's budget by 7.6 percent to 14.2 trillion won, or roughly 14 billion U.S. dollars. This accounts for approximately 4 percent of total fiscal spending penciled in for next year. The budget is dedicated to realizing a 70 percent employment rate and increasing youth employment as well as opening up more job opportunities for women and the elderly. One of the focal points will be boosting vocational training with some $1.7 billion being set aside to give the unemployed skills that they need for jobs. This is an 11% increase from this year, while company incentives for hiring will see a 21% hike. Vice foreign ministers from South Korea and Japan will sit down on Wednesday to discuss a number of bilateral issues as well as North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The first vice ministerial since President Park Geun-hye took office. Seoul's foreign ministry says its vice minister Cho Tae-yong will meet with his Japanese counterpart Akitaka Saiki in Tokyo tomorrow for a strategic dialogue on a wide range of regional issues, including Korea's ban on Japanese fishery products. The last round of talks initially planned for last December had been put off since Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's visit to a controversial war shrine in Tokyo. The Japanese side is expected to push for a summit between the leaders of Seoul and Tokyo in November on the sidelines of the APEC meeting in Beijing. But the Korean side would likely maintain that Japan needs to first offer a sincere apology and compensation for the enslavement of Korean women at its wartime military brothels. And breaking away from tradition, a growing number of Koreans seem to be changing their ways with the times regarding marriage, divorce, 
and even death. Statistics Korea released a report which shows the changing trends in which about 47% of those aged between 50 and 64 said they would rather be cremated post-mortem, nearly three times higher than those who want to be buried. This age group, which includes the baby boomer generation, was more progressive about marriage and divorce as well. More than 26% said that marriage was not a must and nearly 42% were not completely opposed to the idea of divorce, which is in contrast to 75% of their elders who said it was not something they find acceptable. You know, fierce competition continues at the Incheon Asian Games with just four days remaining until the grand finale. Now, it's not just the athletes that have been preparing well in advance to shine at the Games. Korean companies have also been working day and night to gain more exposure during the big event and show off their latest products and technologies. So today we're going to look into how these firms are promoting themselves at the very venue of the Incheon Asian Games. Let's connect live to our Choi Young-ju, who is in Incheon for the story. Good morning, Young ju Good morning, Jinju. I'm at the promotion hall of the uh, for the Korean companies at the Incheon Asian Games. Uh, there are various products ranging from automobiles to information technology, as you said, and also there are some Korean food catered to the international athletes. So these latest products have become part of the games for visitors and athletes. This is the Atlas Village, where competitors are staying for the games. It's made up of over 2,200 rooms in 22 buildings, and it can house a maximum of 14,500 athletes. Samsung Electronics has provided a rest area where 10,000 players can experience its latest products. Athletes can get smart device caricature services, listen to music, and also rent wearable devices. We come here every day because we like to take selfies and we like to use all the products. Alpha phone, because you can do a lot of things with it. Like, and the, the photos are very clear and you can use Facebook and all the apps. We like the Samsung, Samsung NX Mini because you can use the winking function and it's really easy to take selfies. The most popular product here is NX Mini, a light mirrorless digital camera. Samsung Smart TV and Galaxy Tab S provide live broadcasting of the games. Earlier this month, we launched Galaxy Alpha and Tab S internationally. Many Asian athletes are interested in our various latest products, such as the curved UHD TV, which has outstanding video quality and gives you a sense of immersion. This is the main press center where local and foreign journalists congregate, and Samsung has opened up a designated space just for them. The tech giant has been the longest-running corporate sponsor since the Bangkok Asian Games in 1998. With its years of experience, it's able to provide essential electronic devices for members of the media. On one side, it features a curved TV where journalists can get a clearer view of the games from various angles. Yes, uh, this, is, this is all necessary needs are available here and we are happy we, uh, we come to here more and more and more time. So, so it is very good for, for a journalist to, uh, to use this place uh, as far as. I see many, many, many of uh, things to, uh, in, in this launch, I see, and uh, I think uh, the, this is the valuable things of Samsung. I'm from India. You are there. Samsung is a market leader, and I always use Samsung mobiles. I'm from Kerala. Everybody, 70% of mobile users use Samsung phones. Local firms provide these sponsorships to ensure the games are a success and also run smoothly. The main stadium is an SK promotion center, offering a view of Korea's overall telecommunications market and development of its information technology. Local firms provide these sponsorships to ensure the games are a success and also run smoothly. Over the past six months, SK Telecom has installed smart information technology infrastructure in hundreds of venues, including stadiums, data centers, and international broadcasting center. The virtual experience center is quite unique. I have never seen anything like this before. Numerous companies have promotions going on in front of main stadium, 
and it's a great opportunity to get more exposure among foreign athletes. You can see not only various mobile phones, but also sub-miniature smart bean products and smart robots that are on display. It's a unique exhibition drawing much attention from athletes and visitors. You can enjoy a mobile orchestra through your ringtone, which is a service that has been loved for a long time. Also, if you choose a participating country of the Asian Games, you can listen to its national anthem. This has been popular among foreigners. Along with SK Telecom, other companies such as Samsung Electronics, Hyundai Kia Automotive Group, Shinan Bank, and Korean Air have joined in, topping $15 million in sponsorships. The reason for such aggressive sports marketing is because with one percentage point increase in brand recognition, it can bring more than $10 billion in profits. It's not only this year that Korean companies have invested in the Asian Games. Well, some have invested over, uh, nearly 29 billion U.S. dollars since 1985, and while others have been sponsoring uh, professional teams uh, for uh, of less popular sports and also related organizations. Back to you, Jinju. Right. Um, these sporting events are definitely a huge opportunity for companies to promote themselves. Can you tell us more about the expected economic impact it will have on the local economy and the city of Incheon this time around? Well, definitely it will, the impact of this event will go beyond the field of the sports. Uh, it will help prop up the economy of the host city, Incheon, which had an earlier estimated economy effect of uh, over 12 billion U.S. dollars while creating 270,000 jobs. Plus, Korean companies have invested directly and indirectly for these uh, sports teams and also the, uh, over half of the uh, 38 sports. So these will definitely will improve the uh, sports industry as well. Mm -hmm. Hope both athletes and companies see the results they want from this year's Asian Games. Well, thank you, Hyungju, for that report. That was our Cheung Ju reporting live from Incheon on how Korean companies are using the Asian Games to market their brand. Good morning, it's time to run through the front pages of your newspapers. Now, a variety of business or economy related stories this morning on the domestic papers. We'll begin with a look at Chosan Ilbo uh, for the top story here regarding the manufacturing business that is suffering here in the country. The headline says Korean manufacturers once happy about boom in China now cry over rise of Chinese companies. Now, over a month ago, I talked about a similar story on how Korean exports to China have been dying out, uh, particularly in in the manufacturing industry here in the nation. Now, if we take a look at these sub-headlines, related businesses that used to enjoy increased demands from China and hence fully depended on exports for well over a decade now have been losing their ways with Chinese local companies gushing out their own products. Now, some of the top manufacturing companies are thus being downtrodden by Chinese ones, uh, causing their factories to even shut down. Now, this is simply because China no longer wants to buy many of the Korean products that it used to since uh, it has its own makers now as can be seen in this image here this is china's biggest container port in shanghai completely full of trade freight now over on chungang ilbo this one is on actually the suffering job market here in the nation again not not only is the manufacturing market is in misery the employment market here has taken a toll as well the title says less recruits as Samsung Electronics deal blow to college graduates in the second half. Now, if we take a look at these sub-headlines, um, it is the first time since the 2008 financial crisis that Samsung Electronics has reduced its employment scale. Now, for the second half of this year, it is planning to recruit 500 to 1,000 people less, and not to mention that Hyundai Motor also is recruiting 300 less job seekers. Now, the sad but true reality is that there is currently the most number of applicants but the situation is the worst for those college graduates now seeking for a job. And moving on to Tongaibo now for a switch of topics to the side story here 
on uh, North Korean Kim Jong Nam. This is called Kim Jong Nam Appears in Paris. So who is Kim Jong Nam? He is the eldest son of the late Kim Jong Il, uh, the eldest brother of current North Korean leader Kim Jong Un, who is also in self-imposed exile after having fallen out of favor with his father in 2001. Now, interestingly enough, he has been spotted in a hotel lobby over in Paris, seen by a Dong Ilbo journalist. Now, when asked about the situation in North Korea, he said he honestly doesn't really know and hasn't tried to know of the situation there. Now, he added, though, that if he does feel like saying anything, he will make an opportunity to be interviewed by the same journalist. And finally, we'll go to another business headline on the Korea Economic Daily here right in the center. Um, this is called 1.31 million self-employed small and medium-sized businesses exempt from tax audit. So it looks like more than a million firms will be spared from tax investigations for the time being. Um, if you take a look at the subheadlines, businesses with annual sales of less than 100 billion won or 95 million US dollars will be exempt from tax audits until the end of next year. Now, the National Tax Service said yesterday that the waiver will help struggling small businesses to make ends meet amid the prolonged slow economic climate. Now, if we do take a look at this graph, it shows uh, the classification by industry, those companies that will be excused from an undergoing tax investigation. And the most number of them here lie in the food and lodging industry. And that was a look at your newspaper headlines for this Tuesday. Now following are the stock numbers from Monday. Well, the rain we had yesterday seems to have brought down the morning lows by a significant margin. Yep, you could expect fall-like temperatures beginning today. Maybe a little bit chillier, though, and with a, a little bit of additional fog as well. Mm -hmm. For Earth. more on uh, today's weather, we'll go to Chun Song Cho, who joins us right in front in Seo Cho Dong. Good morning, Good morning Song Cho. Good morning to you, Song Cho. Good morning, guys. Yes, because of the rain yesterday, the morning feels definitely cooler than ever, especially with the chilly winds. It continues to rain in Jeju and Gangwon-do province and along the southern coast. Uh, mean Meanwhile, uh, while overcast skies are covering the entire peninsula, the rain clouds are expected to move to the lower half of the peninsula in the late afternoon, releasing five millimeters of drizzles on and off in the southwestern regions. Also, a lot of moisture is still lingering behind in the atmosphere this morning. Some parts along the west coast and toward the inland areas may be affected with heavy fog, so drivers should definitely pay extra attention on their morning commute. Now moving over to Incheon for the Asian Games. A couple of outdoor matches were postponed yesterday due to the rain, but no worries of that happening today. With that, let's take a closer look at today's temperature readings. Gangneung is looking exceptionally chilly with its midday highs at 15 degrees today due to the strong easterly winds. Seoul and Daegu are just at 23, while Gwangju is the warmest at 27 degrees Celsius. A cold front in the upper atmosphere is forecast to bring down the temperatures furthermore tomorrow, so get ready for some chilly autumn weather. This is all for me with the weather forecast. Back to you, Min Jung. Now, Hong Kong remains paralyzed as massive sit-ins continue for a second day, while the death toll mounts in Japan following the sudden volcano eruption on Saturday. We'll take a closer look at these stories with our Eunice Kim, who joins us from the News Center. Good morning. Good morning, Min Jung. The crowds occupying major roads in Hong Kong seem to have only grown since our talk yesterday, although the mood significantly is more peaceful. 
That's right. The sit-ins became vastly more peaceful and larger, might I add, later Monday as demonstrators and authorities both had called for calm. Much of the police withdrew in the afternoon, but the events of Sunday night into early morning Monday, riot police, of course, unleashing pepper spray and tear gas on the protesters, remained on the minds of the pro-democracy demonstrators this morning, some uh, wearing raincoats and goggles just in case as they rested on the pavement. Thousands of protesters remain occupying those major thoroughfares. Now, um, and the as the sit-ins grew to other parts of the city on Monday, including the commercial district of Causeway Bay to Central's east and also across the harbor to Kowloon's Mong Kok. Now, some schools, bank branches, and businesses were closed as the city's Hang Seng Index dropped by 1.9 percent during the trading day. That is significant. The largely young demonstrators chanted for the resignation of Hong Kong's chief executive, C. Y. Lung, as well as for more genuine and democratic reforms to the former British colony. The Hong Kong government, for its part, has canceled the annual fireworks show celebrating China's National Day, which was to happen tomorrow, citing safety concerns. Mm, those images seem very foreign. We really haven't seen demonstrations of this scale since the British handover of Hong Kong back to China in 1997. Now, I understand that it all started when a group of student activists protested against Beijing's involvement in Hong Kong's governance. That's right. The protests became more intensified after China's powerful National People's Congress Standing Committee voted to change the way Hong Kong would pick its chief executive to an election of candidates pre-approved by, in effect, Beijing. And um, that's, of course, not what de democracy activists in Hong Kong have wanted. They want Hong Kongers themselves to directly nominate their candidates. And you could say that this confrontation has been in the coming uh, in the past 17 years or so as the first election of the city's chief executive slated for 2017 will be the realization of a promise included in the handover agreement that set the unique system of one country two systems and the protesters are waging this remarkable act of disobe civil disobedience to ensure that Beijing does not go back on what they see as promises. Mm -hmm. We'll keep an eye on that story for sure. In the meantime, in Japan, rescuers have recovered more bodies on Mount Otake after the volcano exploded on Saturday, really much to everyone's surprise. Yeah, it seems like nobody really saw this coming. And add to that fact that many people were on Ma uh, Mount Otake, Japan's second highest volcano in time to view the autumn foliage, really makes this explosion disastrous. And it is very possible it's not over yet. Authorities have been warning that the volcano could explode again in the coming days. And uh, in fact, this has uh, really pushed rescue crews to suspend their efforts, especially as the volcano has been releasing toxic gas. This as five more unconscious hikers were found near the peak of the volcano on Monday, which pushes the total number of people feared dead to 36, many of those still awaiting confirmation. A lot of family members in Japan still desperately awaiting word on their missing loved ones, while others mourn the deaths caused by this most unexpected event. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts are for sure with the victims in this uh, very tragic natural disaster. Absolutely. Thank you, Eunice. You bet. And still ahead on Korea Today, we'll take a look at what the fizz is all about with carbonated water, sparkling seltzer or soda water, whatever you want to call it. It has seen a jump in demand. Some believe it also comes with health benefits. More on if or not those bubbles matter, so stay tuned. In our past arts and culture segments, we've told you about musicals growing in popularity here in Korea as well as in size and scale and spreading to other areas such as China. We've also seen idol singers and actors from television and the movies come out on a musical as well to increase their range of performances. And our Lee Min Hee joins us with an up-close and personal musical that you can take the whole family to watch. Good morning. Good morning. So this Korean musical, I guess culture you can call it, 
is really being seen as an extension of Hallyu or the Korean wave. Uh, now, it has been garnering quite a bit of support from fans over the years. And recently, one of the most popular musicals from this year opened not just its front door, but its back door as well. Take a look. An action story of the wild frontier, full of love, romance, and battles between the good and the bad. The musical Zorro was first staged in Korea in 2011, and this past August, the masked Spanish hero made a successful return to the musical stage. But what's it like to play the role of such a passionate crime fighter? A group of audience members from Japan were curious about the backstage action, the place where everything comes together, and they were able to get up close and personal with the stage props and even some of the actors. The actors have to change very quickly, usually within a minute, sometimes even in 30 seconds, so there is always someone here to help them change. But I don't think they enjoy the hectic chaos. One of the most popular scenes in the musical takes place on a life-size recreation of a train. Billows of steam, lights and sound effects put everything into action. From the auditorium, the train doesn't look so big, but as I approached it, I realized how large it actually was. The fact that these actors do scenes on this train is very impressive. And from the stage, the group is shown how things work including all the special effects that go into bringing each scene to life. Even though I've seen many performances, being backstage for the first time is really unique, and having the actors explain everything makes it very memorable. The audience members see us on stage and must wonder what kind of people we are. So this program creates a sense of intimacy between the actors and the audience. From the stage to the behind-the-scenes action, these audience members were able to see the production for what it is, behind the mask. No, well, that's a treat for the fans. It mm -hmm. looks like the actual actors themselves, even some of them from the leading roles, led the tours. Right, so this particular tour is being led by the actors who play the roles of Garcia mm -hmm. and of Diego, so okay. the main character Diego. So not only is it an excellent tour, but it's also a meet and greet with, I guess, some of your favorite musical actors. And, you know, with the growth of the musical industry, we've really seen, a, I guess, a growing support for musical actors as well, and they really have been growing in reputation. Okay, so reputation is growing, popularity mm -hmm. is growing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure our viewers would like to know how do you get involved in the tours? question, right? How do you get a hold of these tickets? So these tours, there are two left, um, and one is actually being offered today. And to get an entrance to the tour, you have to go to the Chumu Art Hall uh, the day of the tour, so today by 5 p.m., and they start selling tickets by then. And they're limiting it to only 20 people. So 20 you, people? 20 people, very small group. So you really want to go there. If you're really ambitious, you got to go there early and wait in line and get your tickets. Because chances are you might not be able to get it, a depending on availability. Right? Right. Very okay, small so it's not, there's no online sales, you just have nope, to get there. you got to go there. All right, well, it sounds like... Uh, our fans who really want to go check that out uh, needs to get up and mm -hmm. do it as soon as possible. Well, thank you very much for that report. You're very welcome. And stay with us on Korea Today. We're going to be looking at uh, a place called Chunju and also guest houses in that area. Our four bachelors from last week, we're going to join them once again. They're going to kick off with a game of Chegi Chagi, which is similar to Hacky Sack in the United States. And we're going to see which team gets to decide on lunch. And uh, another unexpected mission, we'll get them cooking with one of Chunju's local specialties. The Namdaemun Market in downtown Seoul is one of the oldest and largest traditional markets here in Korea. It's the place where you can get anything mm -hmm. on this planet, right? <laughs> right? And it's celebrating its 600th anniversary since its opening in 1414. Mm -hmm. Oof. For more on this, we'll turn to our Seomi Sorang who joins us in the studio. Good morning to you. Happy birthday, uh, I guess, the Namdaemun oh, Market. Oh, right? Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if we actually do the math, it means that the market has has been around as long as the gate itself. So we're talking, you know, some 600 years ago, back wow. to the Joseon dynasty. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if we just go back and look at the past 100 years and see how it evolved, 
This is what it looked like from the 1900s, early 1900s to the 70s. Wow. And from the 70s to the 80s. And wow. right now, what we're more used to. Just by looking at those pictures, like we can get a sense of how Korea developed over that time. Exactly, <laughs> it's a sort of a snapshot of each time uh -huh. frame. So how are they celebrating the 600th anniversary? Well, the celebration, the official celebration begins tomorrow and runs for three days. So there'll be plenty of different things to do. Mm. You know, singing, dancing, helium balloons, discount At the events. marketplace? At the marketplace, <laughs> it's, they've got everything there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe uh, drop by and uh, get pick out something Thing, uh, that you right. can use. Yeah, and it's, a, it's especially great for visiting tourists if you're coming to visit Korea because it's quite nearby to Myeongdong and a lot of tourists go there. So just a stop sure. by on the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's see what else people are talking about online. Obesity and aging. So let me show you a quick chart. So if we have a look at on the y-axis, this is the percent of the population that's obese and the x-axis is the different age groups. So in the blue line here, that's the males. Their obesity prevalence peaks in the 30s mm. and it slowly decreases with age. But for us females, <laughs> we keep increasing and it really doesn't stop. Right. We just keep, more of us keep getting it's fatter kind of <laughs> as we age. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but what, what are some of the factors that cause this difference between males and females? Right, well, you know, as with a lot of these things, it's, it's a compound effect and there's a lot of different reasons. But I guess one of the th main things is that our priorities change, you know, after we give mm. birth and have family, we become less fixated on our weight and on our exterior. Mm -hmm. So that could be the biggest reason. Mm. Right. Interesting. Mm. And next, with the rise of single-person households, the demand for these tiny apartments, so ones like these that are around you know, 30 square meters, the demand for these is increasing as well. And lastly, Mayor Park won -sun, the Seoul City Mayor Park won he confirmed on his Facebook page yesterday that parts of Star Trek 3 will be filmed right here in Seoul. Now, if we have a look at what else was filmed in Seoul recently, Avengers 2 was filmed in the Mapo Bridge, while Sense 8, this is the one uh, created by the Wachowski siblings and starring Pedro, another TV series. This one was filmed near the Tonggechon stream recently. Mm -hmm. So, do we know anything about the schedule or the location to us where this um, will be filmed? So, the when and where as well. Uh -huh. It's slated for a 2016 release and it's still very much in the early planning stages. We don't even know half the cast if that's been confirmed. Mm -hmm. but yeah. We will keep you updated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe we can pop up in one of in these the uh, sites in the background. <laughs> an extra a cameo <laughs> appearance there. For our Hollywood debut, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, Misora. You're welcome. All right, that was our Misorang with the news sum up. Uh, I always get a bottle of sparkling water right after my meal every mm -hmm. day. I Me don't too. know. I love sparkling water. Right. Does, does it have health benefits? Beats well, us, right? Uh, we <laughs> we'll yet. find out <laughs> in this report. We'll be back with a doctor shortly after this. Naturally carbonated water from areas across the country such as Chojong, Ojeon and Osek as well as sparkling water hot springs. This naturally carbonated water has been popular with older generations in the past. But now, sparkling water is seeing a surge in its popularity amongst people in their 20s and 30s. I drink sparkling water a lot because I've heard it's good for your health. I drink carbonate water for my skin. There are some 30 types of carbonated water in the market, including those made at home and abroad, giving people a wide variety to choose from. Not only can you pick up a bottle at the store, you can make your own bubbles with a soda maker or water purifier at home with many new products out in the market. Industry sources estimate the carbonated water market will grow to roughly $29 million this year, a 50% increase from last year. Sparkling water is becoming more popular as a healthier drink option. We'll look at whether the fist comes with added benefits. Mm -hmm. And to tell us more about if sparkling water could be actually good for our health or body, we're now joined by Dr. Alice Hyungkyung Tan from Samsung Medical Center in their studio. Good morning. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. All right, so exactly the question is, uh, if sparkling water is uh, 
not just popular because of its fizz, but the carbonation, it's, they say that it actually aids in digestion and also some of the mineral properties of mineral water that comes sparkly also has an effect as well. So we're gonna actually find out a little bit more by asking you the questions, because you probably know the best um, <laughs> out of all of us after a look at this video. I'm Ashley and I'm here to meet someone who has turned sparkling water into her daily life. And I'm not just talking about it as a drink. Let's go check it out right now. Tong Young Nam says she cannot live a day without sparkling water. She has been drinking carbonated water since late last year after she became more conscious of her health. She even makes her own soda water at home. So is this water carbonated now? Yes, it's ready. Wow, so fast and simple. Homemade carbonated water. I had to try it out. Mmm. Wow, this is very tingly and refreshing. I think I drink about two liters a day. I drink it in the morning instead of plain water. And for lunch, I don't have a lot of time because I have to look after my child. So I often drink carbonated water instead because it's filling and I heard it helps with your diet. She even cooks rice with sparkling water and says it gives the rice a nice glow and makes it softer. Her love for bubbles does not stop there. She also uses soda water when she washes her face. Wait, so you're washing your face with carbonated water now? When I wash my face with sparkling water, the toxins come out and my skin feels nice and firm. Finishing up with sparkling water after washing her face has become a ritual for Chong. With the weather getting drier these days, this definitely piqued my interest. Hmm, I'm not really sure. Would washing your face with sparkling water really make a difference? The best way to know is to try it out. So I use tap water and sparkling water to wash my face to measure the moisturizing qualities. But sadly enough, there wasn't a noticeable difference. So doctor, does cleaning your face with sparkling water actually have any health benefits? Scientifically, there are no proven effects of carbonated water yet. Actually, it can cause problems if people with sensitive skin use it, because it can make it red or dry it out, causing dead skin. If you want to use carbonated water, you should test it out to make sure it is right for you. So I had to go on camera with no maker for this and I'm sad that I'm not seeing the results I wanted to see. So it's actually more important to drink lots of water and remember to use facial moisturizers. One of the reasons why people drink soda water is because they say it helps with digestion. Now I'm here to see whether sparkling water really helps with digestion. These people are enjoying a Friday night out with their colleagues. We asked them if they felt like sparkling water helps with digestion. I think, compared to plain water, it helps with digestion and the food seems to go down better. With all the meat, it felt a little too heavy, but I like it because it feels like it's good for digestion. I had a stomachache because I ate too much, but after drinking this, it feels like the food is going down. So Dr. Dan, can you tell us whether sparkling water really helps with digestion? So we have different types of sparkling water in the studio right now. One of which right I will now. drink right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I, I mean, honestly, I swear by sparkling water. I, I have it after every meal. Not every meal, but after a full meal. I think it helps with digestion, but it's just me. I'm guessing. I'm not a doctor, so over to you. <laughs> well, actually, there have been a number of studies that looked exactly into this issue. And what they found was sparkling carbonated beverages did help with the symptoms of what's known as dyspepsia. And dyspepsia is defined as pain, burning, or discomfort in the upper abdomen mm -hmm. associated with nausea, belching, a sense of early fullness, fullness after meals or vomiting. Mm. Carbonated uh, water also showed benefit for symptoms of constipation. Huh. But when the investigators actually measured the amount of time that it took for food to pass from the stomach into the small bowel and then through the entire gut and out of the body through a bowel movement, the amount of time in carbonated water versus plain water was not significantly uh -huh. different. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it did 
help the symptoms, but it didn't really help the motility of the gut at all. Maybe placebo effect? It may be that, <laughs> or it may be um, as you're uh, releasing gas, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. through belching, that may decrease the pressure uh -huh. in the upper part of the stomach, and that may cause some relief. Mm. Hold your belch right there. Do not <laughs> verbal therapy. Ready, viewers? No. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. Now, so, hmm. I'm not sure whether it's because of that fizz and carbonated water, but it it seems to have some kind of revitalizing effect. Could this be possible? Is this true? Well, the two most uh, significant symptoms of dehydration are muscle cramps and fatigue. And carbonated water has been shown to be just as effective as plain water in relieving fluid deficit, in restoring circulation, and helping to flush out toxins. Mm. So it can help with fatigue. Is there any advantage to carbonated water? Uh, maybe, maybe not. It's been shown that the carbon dioxide in carbonated water stimulates certain nerve endings in the tongue. Mm. And this sends signals to the brainstem in an area that helps regulate cardiovascular function and metabolism. Are the two linked? Maybe, maybe not, but this was shown in animal studies. Wow, Ooh. so far a lot of maybe, maybe not stuff <laughs> done over here. All right, now, so we talked about, uh, we actually saw a test that was done, and uh, it showed that uh, the moisture levels by using carbonated water to wash your face and using regular water, it was pretty similar. I mean, mm -hmm. there was no significant change. What about mineral water? Because we take, uh, we're talking about carbonated water versus mineral carbonated water, natural. Natural. Mm -hmm. So right. the effects of mineral water, natural spring water on the skin, these have been reported for decades, if not centuries. And this is known as balneotherapy, or the immersion of a patient in a pool or bath of natural mineral water. It's been shown to soothe the irritation and redness of certain skin conditions, namely atopic dermatitis or eczema uh -huh. and psoriasis. Why mineral water has this effect on the skin remains to be determined, but the bottom line is there's really no side effect, you know, to soaking in a spa of mm -hmm. natural mm -hmm. mineral water. So it can be considered an adjunct to conventional treatment. Mm -hmm. So are there any particular people that um, needs to stay away from carbonated water? People who burp a lot, maybe? <laughs> well, actually, yes. So that's oh, really? one group of patients that I would say should stay away from carbonated drinks. So people for whom the increased gas production because of the carbon dioxide, if it may be particularly uncomfortable for them. So people wow. who have reflux, hiatal hernia, or irritable bowel syndrome, they should probably stay away. Mm -hmm. And people who need to be careful about the sodium intake or salt intake, these are patients with heart disease, kidney disease, or liver disease, they should stay away from carbonated mineral water or mineral water in general because there's more salt in oh. mineral water versus plain water. Hmm. You know, carbonated drinks, uh, they do add, you know, a little bit of cost to a simple glass of water, mm. but I think we can still drink to our health. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I actually had one right in front of me. All right, well, thank, thank you so much Cheers. for joining <laughs> us Now I'm today. kind of full, actually. I had enough of that one. <laughs> right, thank you very much, doctor. You're welcome. And a good Tuesday morning to you all as we continue on with our 2014 Incheon Asian Games coverage starting off in tennis. Now, Monday, South Korea added another gold medal when the duo of Chung Yun and Im Myung Gyu won the men's tennis doubles. And quite a battle between the South Korean duo and India's Sanam Singh and Saketh Mineni as the two pairs go back and forth in the match. But in the end, Chung Yun and Im Myung Gyu prevails with a two sets to nothing victory, 7 5, 7 6 2, winning Korea's first gold medal in the event in 28 years. And now shifting over to the men's 200 meter single kayak event where another gold medal was claimed by a South Korean athlete. After South Korea saw some success over in the Skulls event, this time in Chogang Hee over in the 200 meter single kayak event, as he finishes first with a final time of 35.464 seconds, beating the runner up by more than a second. Now, the gold medal finish also gives Korea their first gold medal in the sport in 24 years when Chun in Shik won triple gold with the 1,000 meter single, two person 500 meter, and the two person 1,000 meter event during the 1990 Beijing Asian Games. 
Now we've seen some surprise gold medals from Korea, but a surprise silver medal isn't bad neither, right? Well, the country did win a surprise silver on Monday over in the men's 10-meter synchro platform. Now, having only won bronze medals in the event before a surprise silver medal from Korea as Kim Young-nam and Woo Ha-ram finishes the final with 403.50 points, giving the nation their first ever silver medal in the event. Now, it's the best finish in Korean diving since the 2002 Busan Asian Games when South Korea won silver in the men's synchronized three-meter springboard event. And now shifting over to the women's football tournament where the two Koreas clash during the semifinals on Monday night. And what a match this was with the winner heading to the final as South Korea's Chung Sar Bin scores on a Ronaldo-esque free kick in the 11th minute, giving South Korea the 1-0 lead. When the 35th minute, Lee Ye Gyung scores the equalizer as the two sides go into the half with a goal each. Now second half, both sides neck and neck with three minutes added on to the injury time. North Korea's Chung Yoo Ri scores on the 90th plus minute, giving North Korea the 2-1 victory as South Korea fails to advance to their first Asian Games final. Now, South Korea added four bronze medals in the freestyle wrestling events on Monday night with Iran dominating in the sport. So, before I say goodbye, let's take a look at the current medal standings at the Incheon Asian Games and see you guys again for your sports needs. So four bachelors backpacking in a guest house and through the city of Chunju. What do you get? We showed you a piece last week. We're going to continue this week. They had a lot of fun for sure. But uh, our guest last week was Derek Stelma. He had said that it was a little like babysitting mm -hmm. with uh, the other guests. So we've invited <laughs> another guest, another bachelor from that uh, the group. Who's also going to tell us that it was like babysitting. Right. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. We have Marco Ferrara joining us. He is from Italy. So buongiorno. Buongiorno. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I've been in Korea. Studio. Yeah, I've been in Korea for about two years now. Mm -hmm. And as you may recall, last week, me and Ivan went to Jeonju and we had to compete uh -huh. against Alex and Derek, right? Right. Which was kind of hard, but you know, Jeonju has this kind of unique atmosphere. It was amazing. And the food, guys, the food is just the best. <laughs> I really want to go there again. So let me show you what happened last week. All right, All right let's well, go. Looking forward to it. Let's go. So as soon as we got to the Hangul guest house, we had to learn how to play the kayak balloon. That's right. And I sing the pangsu. Oh my god, the pangsu! What, what a bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Derek and Alex won, and after that we team up and we play the tiki taki to decide to all for the lunch. Okay, mm -hmm. It's like the hacky sack, basically you're so keeping, that, keeping it up in the air as mm -hmm. much as possible. Let's yeah. see it in action. It, it looks easy, but <laughs> it's, not easy. it's not easy at all. And you know it was the first time for us. I'm glad you're on my team. <laughs> yeah, I think your singing's a lot better. <laughs> right, I think you're, so. um, you're not that good. <laughs> can you see, like, no one is really good. Like, anyone. Yeah. Because it was our first time. Right. Okay. Trust me, it's my fifth time. I'm still terrible at it. <laughs> what? Ooh, look who knows wow. how to there do you that. Go. What? You could tell you what he what? did in college. Look at that. It's like <laughs> nine to one. Like, <laughs> Alex was no, amazing. No, no, I, I don't know how. Thank you so much, Dong Sang. Yeah, yeah. He did it. It's our young name, you know? Oh. I, I, I need to respect. It's oh, Korean please. culture. So. I know. I did it on purpose, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let's get some. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Let's go. I like meat. Nice. <laughs> oh, I wow. think they have lunch. Yeah. Wait, yeah. so you lost the big room, yeah. and now you lost the Chuggy Chuggy again. Exactly. I really so wanted no to meal. eat bibimbap. Look at that bibimbap. Mm -hmm. But I just ended up looking at the others <laughs> eating. Oh my god. So they're having sokkalbi. Yeah, sokkalbi. It, uh, it was, oh my god, amazing. Sokkalbi is actually like marinated ribs, right, mm -hmm. in the grill. Oh. oh, look at that. 
And there's Derek just seemingly rubbing it in, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's torturing. <laughs> you guys have really watch? Starving. Wow, that's agonizing. <laughs> I was starving. I was the first person to, to start the singing, head. head, shoulders, knees, and toes. You can have this. We want you to sing so head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, I do have to watch it. You're singing quite a lot in this segment. <laughs> right? I get good. That's not Modi, that's your butt. <laughs> Is that. Oh, is that Korean or Italian you're speaking there? I'm not sure. Huh? Were there a lot of people at the restaurant? Yeah, okay. yeah they were all staring at me. But look, that was just amazing. It was worth it. It was worth it. Well, and then we just wanted to rest, you know, and relax for a bit. But then another mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. What? It says right here. It says. Cook a dish from your home country what? using Jeonju's regional specialty, <laughs> bean sprouts. Bean sprouts. Bean sprouts. Oh boy. So hmm. two Americans and two Italians yeah. going on a I think we got this. Let's do this. We got this. We're going to win. Here we go, Come on, guys. Yeah, need it. What? what? <laughs> you have to beat this one. I mean, Italy has such a rich food culture. When it culture. comes to food, right? right. But we had to put like kumnamur in like in our you know Italian Delicious. kitchen style, cuisine style. What kind of food would emerge out of this ingredients? You know, we tried so hard, and you, you know, if you lost this this mission, we had to clean like tons of dishes and oh. stuff. I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> Alex and Derek made this kind of. What is this? Omelette? Omelette. Omelet, it looks like omelette with kimchi. <laughs> but look at that pasta. Look at the pasta. That so looks really good. We just finished our mission okay, so of cooking pasta using bean omelet. sprouts. Yeah. Kumnamu. We made uh, an omelette. People need to judge. These guys decided to do some spaghetti here. Like yeah, 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 we, yeah, we, we made it with fresh tomatoes. We asked these people to try it and we're going to figure out which one is better. Now people need to judge. But it looks like, yeah, pasta is better, right? <laughs> really? We made it a, a bit spicy, so Korea can enjoy it more. <laughs> to be honest, I do want more of the Kongnamul omelette because it's nice and spicy. But I love noodles so much. Wonder how it tastes like. <laughs> Maybe it's also a cultural thing. Was Koreans uh, get friendlier with noodles, perhaps. Yeah, like I guess an omelet. So. And look at us, finally! Winning, you know, we had like right. a oh, yeah, tough yeah, day. We kept losing. Really. <laughs> Finally, it was close. It was close. Yeah, 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 I'll see you later, guys. Life's hard. Time. You can tell. But it was really good. It was good. Yeah, but this is better. Enjoy your, your life. Bye. Bye. I'm trying. It's pretty good. It's actually really good. We'll get our revenge tomorrow. Yeah. We will? <laughs> yes. Let's go. All right, fine. Let's clean. Bye bye. She was so cute. Another day has come. Look at this mm -hmm. beautiful flowers wow. and sunlight. And we just wanted to sleep, but <laughs> <laughs> apparently another mission. An early wow, well, look at the dark thing. He looks exhausted. Yeah, we were exhausted, you know. And again. Another <laughs> running, challenge, it, huh? Yeah, another challenge in the early morning. Oh my god, this. Part was so much fun. Ooh, so much fun was my favorite the part. <laughs> Look at this dancing. It's so good. Don't right? give it away. Be careful there. <laughs> <laughs> it's
Sir, uh, your team defeated Derek and uh, Alex yeah. nine to one oh, with the uh, bean sprout spaghetti. Yeah. Um, who came up with the idea of making this bean sprout spaghetti? Well, you know, even it's half Korean and half Italian, which is, I think, the perfect partner for this kind of challenge, mm -hmm. right? So I think he thought about spaghetti and stuff because you know if you think about Korean like cousin, uh, I mean pasta and pizza is the first thing that came out, right? Mm -hmm. So pizza is a bit too hard and too difficult <laughs> to make, right? <laughs> so we made this pasta and we just add a bit of spiciness because you know mm -hmm. Korean likes spice and right. we wanted to win so badly, so we mm. add like pepper and stuff. <laughs> Did you really try the omelet? I tried. But Derek and I Alex mean, made. So what was I mean? So, all right, Derek's not here. What did you think He's about that? He's probably watching from home, though, right? Um, right back uh, at him. Let's, go, go. Let's say like they're not that like great uh, shots. It wasn't <laughs> unique. It was just like you know, so and so. Whatever. Uh, whatever. <laughs> at least that combination there. When well, yeah. you know, food culture-wise, um, Italy is a peninsula as well, and yeah, Korea right. is also a peninsula. So mm. there are some similarities in food culture. But uh, going back to this Hokkaido, what did you think about that, real quick? Oh my god, that was like the best hokkaido I ever had in my life. I, I mean, I just had like a beat, like a bite, mm -hmm. but it was amazing. I mean, maybe um, next time you could incorporate that into your pasta. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That'd <laughs> be pasta. great. Um, okay, and uh, someone else, some other bachelor will be back next week mm -hmm. with uh, another episode, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure, sure. Really exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so Looking much for, for joining us today. Thank you, guys. It was really fun. All right, Marco. All right, that wraps up this edition of Korea Today on this Tuesday morning. Okay, it's going to be a little bit chillier than usual, so maybe bundle up just a little bit, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Have a good day. Goodbye.